All right, I'm back. I am going to do a video on, I did a video on the terminal setup over here that I run with the beads and the swivels and the sliders. And now I'm going to do a video. I'm going to kind of show my setup for generally how I run triangle flashers uh, with mooching rigs. I, I mean, I run them, you know, I run lots of different things, but with a mooching rig or, you know, how I run a, uh, a brads any super baits or cut plug blades whatever whatever i'm running but mooching style triangle flasher setup for salmon chinook coho um in the columbia river ocean in the bays in oregon all right so i've gone over in another video this setup here and now i'm going to go over kind of like how i run it from here on out so I love pipe insulators. They're super cheap. I cut them up and then I wrap uh, what I'm going to do, what I'm using. These are my bumpers. I love using, I actually started using these 200 pound tuna cords fairly recently and I love them. I mean, they're the way to go. You got to spend a little bit of money to get set up, to get the gear for it. I mean, a little extra, but what, you know, salmon fishing is not, not cheap by any means. So <laughs> this is what I do. This is what I run. It works awesome. So like I said, they're 200 pound and then I got them crimped. I'll do a video just on these because, you know, that's how I found and learned is people making videos, just regular old people. And then, you know, Anglo STV, Addicted Guides, all that stuff. They do a lot of great, great stuff. And uh, so I'm just going to post this stuff out and show what I do and what works for me. And if you like it, hit like, check out stuff I link in below. And yeah. So anyway, get back to it. So I run this, I run these triangle beads on here as well, because I found that these will collect seaweed, debris, and other stuff. So I actually run two of these cone beads on my setup. So my bumper will go hook here, and then run down. Other end, we'll have another bead to keep, keep stuff off. Then I'll go to a bead chain, six bead chain, whatever brand. I'll, I'll post some in the description so you can check it out. Then I'll duo snap that to my flasher. Now that just gives it a lot of freedom, rotational freedom. And it, it you're not going to lose your flasher. If this is not going to break, your uh, lower line is going to break. I'm sure everybody's heard that a million times, but yeah, I like this. I used to run 40 pound mono. It worked okay, but these are a lot more durable. So if you want to invest a little more, I, I recommend running a route like this. I'll post all this. I got all this on Amazon. So I'll post all this below so you can check it out if you feel like maybe go into this style. Um, there's a million different crimps out there. I just found these. These were cheap aluminum crimps and they came with a little, or actually I don't think they did come with the, the little tool, but oh well, they work for me. All right. So I separate, I try to be fairly organized when I'm out fishing because everybody knows that when the bite's on, the bite's on. So you got to get gear back in the water if you get tangled up. So I do, I do all my pre-leaders, or I pre-tie all my leaders, and then I label them. So that's kind of hard to see, unfortunately, but they're... So these are three-aught hooks, and these are my 36-inch mooching. So I'll run these with, uh, actually, with the 360 flasher setup, which I'll go over how I run mine. So, you know, I keep spools of these just so I have them on hand. If I want to switch them up, it's fast. All right, so these are my five aughts. I run these 72 inch. These I'll run in the ocean for fall Chinook, uh, especially like out of Garibaldi, just a larger hook. I know, and, you know, and it, people run anywhere from three aught to six aught, I would say, in this area. Um, but our Chinook, you know, they're not as, Columbia River, I mean, they don't, you don't see them as big, but some of the coastal fisheries, you can definitely see, you know, 30 plus pounders caught. And I, there was a 40 pounder caught last year, I believe in Solette's. So, you know, having that bigger hook, it'll just help from breaking the hook. Um, we have, you know, coho will hit them too, and you'll get them on that. But, you know, I like running these big five aughts when I'm targeting Chinook down at the coast. You know, they're just, they fight hard, and they're bigger, and they're fresh right out of salt, especially out in the ocean. Uh, that's a preference thing. Four aughts good too. I mean, I run them all. So, and I've got these over here. These are, th uh, these are... I don't have it labeled, but I'm pretty sure these are all three aughts and these are 60 inches. I label barbed here in Oregon. If you're not from here and you're watching this, 
we have to run barbless in a lot of areas, but we can also run barbed, like for instance, Garibaldi, you can run barbed in the bay, but as soon as you cross out in the ocean, you have to go barbless. Um, and these rules change all the time. Last year, we had like a section of the Columbia that, or a time frame in the Columbia, oh, hey, you're barbless, but only for salmon, not for sturgeon, you know, so, or you can run barbed in the Columbia, sorry, but uh, yeah, and then the Willamette, okay, some years it's like you can run barbed and then barbless. You just gotta be on it because if you get stopped by the cops, they will uh, definitely check you. I had a buddy who got, they they accidentally, you know, they got, they got a ticket and, it sucks so just try to be up on your regs and you don't want to get you know you don't want to get a fine you know especially on the columbia river it feels like i feel like that's where they're out the most uh the state police and everything which i get there's people out there not doing what they're supposed to do but uh yeah so anyway so i rig up all my gear like that i pre-rig everything so it's ready to go if i have and then my rods i always keep rigged before we head out like this so after I run my bumper to my flasher, it's just as simple as what kind of leader do I want to use? So if I throw a 72 inch leader on there, just snap it on. These actually have uh, bead chains at the end of them. So I run another duo snap and snap them on and you're good to go. Run your herring, your anchovy, whatever it is. Uh, and I personally, I like Seaguar 30 pound. It works for me. There's a ton of different stuff but I like Seaguar. It, it seems pretty durable and I can, you know, I haven't had it break too often. I mean, anything will break, especially with Big Chinook, but this has been held up really well. So that's personal preference. It's what I run, works. If it works, I run with it. Simple as that. So I've also got, I'll, rad, I'll run droppers in the rivers and uh, I just kind of sort them out like this. And it's just like a 12 pound Berkeley line that I'll just pre-rig up and then roll up and keep them in here. So I run 18s or uh, this one I think is 12 inch. So, so yeah, I'll run these in the rivers or whenever you want to run bottom. I'll run the dropper from my my slider and I'll bring it down. So that way if this snags up, it can break off. Um, but if I'm in the ocean, I'll just snap it right on because it really doesn't matter that much to me. Um, and it's just another thing to get tangled up. Obviously tons of this stuff can be tangled like crazy. That's why I pre-tie everything, keep it all ready to go. First time I went out fishing, salmon fishing, uh, with my own boat, I didn't have anything pre-tied. We were in a bite and I like had gear rat nested up and i was just a mess i was trying to tie it took me like 20 minutes you know you're trying to drive a boat you don't really know what you're doing it was it was a mess so uh i i go to pre-tying it it's the way to go and if you're ready and you're prepared it just you can get your your gear in the water as fast as possible which will get you fish i mean if you're not in the water and your gear's not working right you're not fishing so i live by spending the time outside pre-tying getting everything ready to go and have a system where you're efficient at getting your gear back down in the water fast. That's how you're gonna catch salmon. All right, so I use Gamagatsu hooks. Um, pretty much the only hooks I use. I think they're the best. <laughs> that's, a pin that's my opinion. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there, but I like Gamagatsu for salmon. I use other stuff, other hooks for other things, but when it comes to salmon, these are my go-to. Oh, just flip that off, all right. All right, so it's kind of a basic setup that I run for my triangle flashers. And I'll run these Spring Chinook, Fall Chinook, Ocean, the river, uh, the bay. I mean, they work everywhere. Uh, the one place I won't really run these is sometimes in Garibaldi, I will run no flasher whatsoever. And I'll just run my mooching rig right from my terminal. Just straight up, because there's they're so condensed, especially if you're fishing in the bay, right at the, the tips of the jaws, the north side of the jetty. You don't need a flasher. If they see that hearing, they're gonna hammer it. And I've had we've had times where we don't run a flasher and they'll hit the you know, there's a flasher on one that's a little higher up, we're running for coho, but the Chinook will hit multiple hits on the 
non-flasher reel rod and that's just a cut plug herring we're running there so you know you just gotta experiment with what works and the reason i do that too is that there's a lot of seaweed in garibaldi and you just get just tangled to hell so if you're not on it and constantly cleaning your gear you're not gonna fit you're not fishing so that's why i do that and it seems to work you'll see guides doing it too and that's always something i always watch the guides if they're doing something and they're catching fish you might want to copy them all right so i always have toothpicks on hand especially if you run an anchovy you can put a bend in it and then just jam a toothpick right through it it's a good thing to have my bead uh six six bead chains those are really great we use those all over my gear and just helps with wounding up um, for cut plugging uh, you just have one of these full b cut pluggers i always use silver side always use the coho side um, i've never used the chinook side you know that's what everybody says get that tight roll and the coho side's going to give you that tight roll and you want that thing spinning like a drill bit and if you have it spinning like a drill bit and they see it and they're in the mood you're, you're gonna hit it so I'll do little videos on how I rig it up. I rig up my fish, but this is what I use. Um, I've lost these before. So I was actually thinking of putting like a tagline on it to hook it onto the boat. Uh, Cause I have like a, my bait stations in the rear over my uh, fish box. And it's just a cheap, whatever knife from Fisherman's Outdoor Marine that I got. I just have a bunch of these around the boat in case you need to cut a line or cut an anchor line or cut herring or whatever. And, they're cheap and they work well so yeah so that's my basic setup for triangle flashers um basic go-to i'll go into other videos in more detail detailed setups i mean there's a lot of videos out there of how guys rig actually tie these and rig these up but i just wanted to show like an overview of what i do and what works in the oregon Northwest Oregon area. Um, and this is what a lot, of, most, most people run. You'll see a bunch of different variations, but this is just what works for me. So if it works, if it works, I run with it. If not, <laughs> I do something different. 